guys on stage, welcome Rob Paulson. Save any Vorcha lines for the end of the day. 
And uh, I, I would basically just scream in the booth and blow up my voice uh, for these screechy aliens. And also I would do it with a little bit of water in my mouth. Like so. As far as I'm concerned, uh, I used to do a little character on the Brex show by the name of Thunder Please. Yeah, thank you very much. He's now dead. <laughs> they put him in the mothballs. He's rusty. So we had an episode where Brack was supposed to take care of his goldfish. <laughs> and Brack said, uh, you want me to feed him three hams? Three hams! So Thundercliffs was very therapeutic. I yelled a lot. I was like, thank you, doctor, for the session. I got a lot out. And there was one where everybody rapped the whole episode. So Thundercleese's rap was all about war is my obsession. War, war, war. It was all about war. So that's what Thundercleese is all about. War. So it's like Thundercleese was basically therapeutic, like I said. But Frylock, on the other hand, he gets upset sometimes, mostly at Master Shake. You know, he's like, Shake, we're not going to do this. Shake, which is Shake. Shut the F up, Shake. You know, and it's like Thunder, Thundercleese and Frylock are similar in that way because they get upset with stupid stuff. Like, Brack is very idiotic, Shake is moronic, and Meatwad is just a baby. <laughs> so, it's easy. It's easy. If you've ever had a problem with your children <laughs> or your pets, they get out of line, they pee on something, and you discipline them by yelling. You know what it's like. Just channel that energy and bring it out. That's what it's all about. You take something from your real life and apply it to your heart. And that's it. For me, I have two characters that wear out my voice. And one is Muscle Man, and it's usually with his uh, squealing. <laughs> And there tends to be a lot of that, especially in Muscle Man episodes. So after doing like a lot of <laughs> and then them going, uh, no, can you can you make it sound like more like he's getting electrocuted? And then, <laughs> over a long period of time, I usually have to get some tea so I can finish on yeah. the break or something with honey in it. But uh, and then uh, Benson is just straight up shouting. So it's when he's in his big, huge, like, um, Mordecai and Rigby! Oh, I'm sorry, usually it starts to wear out my voice. <laughs> Two years ago, I, I had to do a, a video game. I think it was like Evil Dead 2 or something like that. But I was like Satan and Satan's dog. <laughs> and it was like one of those, I will drag you to hell. Mercy. You know, I don't know. <laughs> Something like that. But no, the dog was. Dogs are terrible. Uh, you know, uh, Pluto's tough on the throat, but. Whoa, whoa! That's Pluto. In 70, I do Sir Yips a lot, which is a lot rougher because it's. <laughs> and it's very tough on the throat. And, but the dog from hell was. <laughs> you know, like that. And it scares my own dog at home. <laughs> You know I can't talk anymore. Yeah. Oh, those, those, those are throat rippers. Yeah. Damn. Hi. Right, next question. Um, this is a question from Blasto. And I was wondering, uh, could you ever see yourself teaming up with other specters? This one is open to that possibility. <laughs> <laughs> However, this one would hasten to point out this one needs no assistance. <laughs> Blasto is, as humans say, badass. <laughs> Even though technically I do not have an ass. Which is bad. Which is bad. Yeah. <laughs> Man or shepherd? Yes. Could you please tell us what's your perfect day? <laughs> Probably involve banging, okay? <laughs> well, 
that's not even from a game. That's from a YouTube thing. <laughs> and I love game with Uh This is for Goofy. Uh, what happened to Max's mom? Let me see you. I'm dating Jessica Rabbit for a while. <laughs> Dropped her off at the mall. I didn't see her since. <laughs> I don't know who she is, but that's a good guess. That's, Goofy is not stupid. You know. Please forgive me, but I have had the good fortune of knowing and working with Mr. Farmer for probably almost 30 years. And I tell you, I promise you, that never gets old. <laughs> And I really oh. wish we were able to get some of the outtakes and the, the goof troops. Oh, show. there's a lot of those, yes. I gotta, I gotta tell you, you know, because Rob's on the panel here, and I met him. My first series was Goof Troop, and as a, you know, I was a title star. And I go into a, a room with Rob Paulson, Jim Cummings, uh, Frank Welker, yeah. April Winchell, Nancy Cartwright, Dana Hill, and God, it was like terrifying because these guys are so good. We never even got a rehearsal on that show. We get the scripts and we go and it's like, and then Jenny McSwain, here, do it, you know. And we just do it cold. And I sit next to Welker and this, I said, crap, yeah. this guy's great, you know. And we did that for 80 some episodes and it was, I learned so much by that. That's, you know, people always ask me, how do you, how do you learn to do this? Sit next to guys like Rob for about two years, you're going to learn a lot. Or, yeah. or you're going to get some sort of strange skin infection. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Jeff, this one is for Benson. All right, so in the episode where you had bad luck and the vacuum cleaner sucked up your robe, <laughs> you didn't really look any different, so... Does that mean you practically walk around all the time naked? <laughs> Look, I have a very strict uniform that I like to wear at work. I don't walk around naked. It's just my attire that I wear every day. <laughs> that makes any sense to you at all. This one is for uh, Mr. Carl Weezer. Um, if I could... Um, I'd like you to map out a therapy session from Carl, because I know he's got to be traumatized with all the adventures he's gone on on Jimmy Neutron. Like, there's things that a regular kid shouldn't be doing in like an everyday uh, session. So if you could like improv out um, like a therapy session with Carl Weezer for me. What, what is your name? <laughs> um, Dr. Hodge. Dr. Hodge? Why are you in a purple t-shirt? <laughs> for 200 bucks an hour to shrink me. That does not instill confidence. It's, it's casual Friday at the workplace. I don't make the rules. Oh, okay. So you're like, a be this doctor. <laughs> well then, I gotta tell you, I've got a gun. Well, I, you know, Carl does understand that the show might be called Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius, but you are so smiling, and that is the greatest thing about this game. All of you are either doing one of three things, you have gas, you like my character, or you're smiling and going, I don't want to frown at him because he might just burst. But Carl knows that the real star of the show is me and Woo! my llamas and my <laughs> Carrie, I have a question for Thunder Cleese and Frylock. We found out that you guys were related, but nothing ever ever came of that, and you seemed estranged, and I was wondering before it was too late. Did you get to settle the, the books with each other? And make amends? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought... All right, uh, Thunder Cleese. Did you ever get a chance to pursue musical theater after your debut? I did Pippin on Broadway. <laughs> I threw up the stage, pow, bang, boom, with my rockets. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Next question.
didn't know I was blessed to. <laughs> Good afternoon. My question is for Goofy. Uh, sure. After, after all these years, what would you say is the most important contributing factor to the continued relationship that you have with Mickey and Donald? Like, why are you such a good friend? The worst. My most, uh, let's see, uh, worst, the monthly payoffs. <laughs> Sorry, this is a, because you're asking. I, I, these events always spur memories because we've had the good fortune of working together so long. Um, many of you know that Wayne Allwine, God bless his, God rest his soul, who was the voice of Goofy for what 30 odd years. Yeah. Right? Well, and and uh, Rusey Taylor, who is still continues to be the voice of Minnie Mouse, they were married in real life. Yeah. Right. Oh, and that is appropriate because they were. I've never. Have you ever seen two people more in love than Rusey Taylor and Wayne Allwine? They were just delightful and really unabashed about their desperate love for each other. They were both in bad marriages when I met yes. them. And they fell in love, got divorced, married each other. And, and so great. So Mickey and, Go Mickey and Minnie found each other yeah. and they adored each other. But because I am the way I am, I remember we had a session together and Brucey was working doing Minnie Mouse. I don't know what I was doing. And, and Wayne walked in and she always said, oh, there's my handsome prince. There's my, the man in my dream. Yeah. Totally sweet. And so I'm like, God, Brucey and Wayne, you are so cute together. And you know what? I would pay money to hear what that bedroom says. <laughs> Oh, they, they, yeah, they were great. They were totally in love. They were Mickey and Minnie. And Wayne just had, you never heard, he was always uh, complaining that Mickey was too bland. Yeah. That they didn't give him enough to, to do, the, you know, mischievous. He was about, he was such a, a, a great actor because he was, uh, you know, an Emmy Award winning sound editor. Yeah. He was. Musician. Uh, and yeah, he, uh, for Steven Spielberg's Amazing Stories, he won an Emmy. Right. And uh, he was a great musician. Played drums, played uh, ukulele all the time. You know, was a, a great, and he was funny. Oh, I mean, really that's funny. why they separated us. The, we used to do ensemble work on yeah. Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Yeah. And we, have, I told a story before. We uh, had an episode called Doctor Daisy. And Daisy comes in, and That's she's trying like a doctor, and, and Goofy's hurt his knee, and I had to say the line, true story, I had to say the line, Gorse, Daisy, would you blow up my boo-boo? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't say it without laughing. Okay. And Wayne was over in the corner going, gosh, would she blow up my boo-boo after that? <laughs> Lucy was on the floor, we couldn't do this for like a half an hour. <laughs> That's why they call it the happiest place on earth. He was so funny that they, after that, we all did solo recordings. We couldn't be in the same room together from that Sorry, I couldn't first resist. episode. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. He was he was an amazing guy, but a great gate side. Wonderful. Guy. People should know about him. He was he was amazing. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, more Awesome. Right. Thank you. I thought I came from a voiceover panel, not the I, live I, reading I, of Rule 34. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Commander Shepard, apparently the Reapers have torn open a parallel universe of multiple realities. At all the panels of various actors of whatever characters they have, who would you like to go on with you to the final mission to defeat the Reapers out of all their characters they have? Basically, whoever would you like to bring with you from these guys? All right, all right. Yeah. I'm gonna have to put a team together. Everyone report to the Normandy ASAP. Well, bam, okay. But also, <laughs> also we'll stop the Reapers. All right, I'm going to need. Uh, I'm, I'm probably gonna want Goofy here. I uh, I know that in, at least in some incarnations he has superpowers. Here, that'll come in handy. Uh, Frylock, we know Frylock has powers. Yes. 
Well, you know I can take some lasers and just blast the hell out of somebody. <laughs> that sounds great, that sounds great. You got a gun, you said? You have a gun? Oh, yeah. I have a gun. <laughs> That's great. I'm glad you brought your tickets to the gun show. I am a bad mother. Shut your mouth. And, um, all right, uh, what, what, what can you do? Do you have a gun? Do you have a... Things carried. All right, we have our team. <laughs> okay, I have a question for Pops. Yes. <laughs> Tacos or burritos? Oh, <laughs> burritos. I was first introduced to tacos and burritos by my good. Friends, Mordecai and Mimi. <laughs> and I would have to say that at first I thought both were a little different, <laughs> but I prefer tacos. <laughs> I once did an anime uh, voiceover gig, I, I, but it was years ago, and I, I, I think it was a very minor part uh, in a cartoon. And I stopped working for that company when I found out that my cab fare to the studio was more than I would be. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I, 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 yes, I haven't done much anime, but I've, uh, I enjoy it sometimes, especially old, old stuff like uh, Battle of the Planets. You guys might have known it as G-Force seven years ago. And Astro Boy, and, and more recently, Attack on Titan. Yeah. Yeah. I don't agree you haven't done much anime. I, have, I haven't done much anime. I did one anime. It was called A Very Private Lesson. Oh, oh God. I played the coolest kid in school and the nerdiest kid in school. <laughs> and I thought, this is it. I'm going to do anime now. Have not gotten another call since? <laughs> I've never done any anime. So. I've done, I guess, you know, I've done a couple of... Kawasaki film, Porco Rosso. Incidental characters like I was a general or something like that. I don't even remember what I did. It was like just one little afternoon. I'm getting old. I don't even know where my wallet is. But, uh, you know, and uh, if you count uh, Astro Boy, I did uh, episodes of that where I was a detective Tawashi for about 50 episodes of that, you know, about 10 years ago. And uh, various monsters. And there are a lot of fun. I did one a long time ago. This was uh, through. Uh, I forgot even who did it. It was called Chuck the Beaver. It was called Chuck the Beaver, and I had to do a bear, I remember. And so I was doing an Arnold type of bear. Would you like me to get the honey? And it, was like, it was really strange. And then one of the bears, like, rips his eye out. It was the strangest thing I've ever seen. And it was weird stuff, okay. I will, I will lay down before you and prostate myself. And it was a very strange, strange deal. Uh, <laughs> Kingdom Hearts is almost anime sometimes. But, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Okay, next question. Hi. Yes. That's why you convert up there. Uh, I talked to her over there. All right. Uh, like, can you, like, each of y'all do your favorite quote from your favorite movie? Mm -hmm. And, like, I need Carl, Blasto, Frylock, <laughs> uh, I mean, like, Goofy, and Benson. Do you want my favorite quote as Carl from my favorite movie? Yeah, from your favorite work. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this is easy for me. <clears throat> Forget it, Jake. It's Chinatown. And uh, you wanted this as Blasto for me? Look in your heart, please. I'm begging you. Look in your heart. Miller's Crossing, John Turturro. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Did I fire six shots? <laughs> oh, that's fine. Nice. Well, no, it's confusion. I don't know myself. So do you feel lucky? Punk. <laughs> Life is like a box of chocolate. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. <laughs>
I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. <laughs> to be at a studio and I'm late and I can't find where it is, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I've had that in real life. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I've had people say that they've had dreams about my characters. I've had people say, I had, you know, Yakko was in my dream. <laughs> God forbid, Pinky was in my dream. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't dream about Goofy and I sure hope my wife doesn't. <laughs> She asked you to do the voice in bed. <laughs> I've been asked that many times. Yeah. Well? <laughs> hey, if I could do a Chris Hemsworth impression, I'd have more kids. <laughs> okay, this is for all of you. I'd like you to sing a lyric from any song, pop song or song, whichever, in the silliest voice you have. Okay, from any song? Yes, but not from the series in which your character is. Oh. That's okay, I can totally hear that. <clears throat> Pinky loves rock and roll. <laughs> Ditches and burn through the witches. I slam in the back of my Dracula. Don't you want me, baby? Don't you want me now? I think I already know Rob's answer, but as your favorite char favorite character you do, what is your favorite pickup line? Oh. What is your name? <laughs> Barbie. Barbie? <laughs> My name is Ken. <laughs> Probably do something like, hello, Barbie. And I would say, I would say, Barbie, sweetheart, come here. Now come here, come here. Come on, close up. Now come here, come here. Wow, hello, Barbie and Eve. <laughs> okay, I want you that that little mark right there on your forehead, can you see it? You don't see it? Oh, that must have happened when you fell out of heaven. <laughs> Here's my hotel room key. <laughs> you yeah, you have to go get your own, baby. Listen, the water tower is open to you anytime. <laughs> You're a great sport. <laughs> oh, and leave the ears on that kind of big. <laughs> Well, you know, I've, uh, I've gone to this well a few times already today, but... <laughs> well, bang, okay. <laughs> steak, Lyra. There's so much steak. <laughs> Barbie, why don't you pick up a couple of your friends and come on over to a four and put a cigarette on your damn eye. <laughs> Hey, uh, you wanna come with me and drive my truck in the crash pit? 
Could I interest you in a slightly used body? <laughs> Thank you, Bobby. As your favorite character, could you say your favorite line you actually had to say with it? The favorite line that I've had to say with one of my characters? Oh, well, um, do you have a favorite one that you know that, that I did? I don't mean to be so arrogant, but is there anyone else to do that? Your choice. Okay, <clears throat> what is your name? Jerry. Jerry, would you ask me, Pinky, are you pondering what you're, I'm pondering? <laughs> Pinky, are you pondering what I'm pondering? Well, I think so, Jerry, but Jimmy Crash Cohen, nobody cares. Why does he keep doing it? <laughs> And, uh, it was Jerry, right? Yeah. I'm Commander Shepard, and Jerry is my favorite human on the Citadel. <laughs> Jerry, why don't you pick up a couple of bitches? <laughs> They call it quartz parchment shears. Oh, fuck it, Ash. It's a long stall. So, Goofy, if, yep. uh, if Pluto's a dog and he walks on all fours, <laughs> and Goofy's a dog, how come he wears clothes and talks and drives a car? The wars have got a better agent. <laughs> Commander Shepard. Yes. What is your favorite store on the Citadel? <laughs> My favorite store on the Citadel is whatever one I happen to be in at the time that gives me a discount. <laughs> go. This is for everybody on the panel. With all the work that you have all done, are there any good blooper or practical joke stories that you guys would like to share with us that you actually can share with us. <laughs> because we know, we've heard the stories of yeah. some of the stuff that left on the cutting room floor. And could I ask you to do it in the voices of your characters? Um, well, okay, since we're sort of going, uh, I, uh... When my friend Maurice Lamarche, who does the voice of the brain, um, we used to, all of his mic checks were as Orson Welles. He would do, we know remote farm in Lincolnshire where Mrs. Buckley lives. <laughs> Many of you don't know that. I mean, excuse me, many of you just think his voice is a little worn out and say, no, no bloody weekend. <laughs> so I will defer to mine for the moment, if you don't mind. But, it, but this is a fun story, because Maurice LaMarche, who you know as the brain, is an incredibly gifted fellow, but uh, he does an impeccable impression of Orson Welles, which is ostensibly what the brain was, right? Or essentially what the brain was. Um, and uh, he used to use that, you know, uh, Frozen Peas commercial thing, it's great outtake. And just Google Orson Welles Frozen Peas, it's one of the best outtake tapes of the great Orson Welles, he's absolutely angry and it was just really great. It's a great thing to listen to. But Maurice would use, he knows that verbatim, and he would use that to uh, uh, do his mic check. And so one day we didn't tell everybody, we didn't know, we all knew, but we didn't tell Mo when he got to work and there was a script and it was a Pinky in the Brain version of that outtake. So it was essentially a $400,000 in-joke. <laughs> he started reading it and he goes, we know a remote farm. And, and you can see his eyes would well up and he's like, oh my god! Oh my god! So it's great, but there are, there are a couple of swear words in it and they would, you know, switch it around. So it's an episode that we ended up doing called Yes Always. So if you watch, oh thank you. If you watch Yes Always and Google Orson Welles' Frozen Peas, it's remarkable how almost verbatim that is. So that's well, it's a really good one, yeah. Uh, it's for a behind the scenes story. Uh, let's see. Well, uh, uh, I got to meet Martin Sheen, actually, in Los Angeles. And most of the time when we record, unlike animation, <laughs> we're recording separately uh, because we have a cast that's spread out over several countries and a couple of continents. So uh, we didn't necessarily get to meet our co-stars. Martin Sheen was a very nice man and he, we went and watched his session, and uh, he was doing a very dramatic scene at, uh, at the Elusive Man's death, actually. Spoilers. 
Spoilers. <laughs> and he, he was doing a great job, fantastic job, and just at an emotional high point of the elusive man's death speech, he looked out at all of us looking at him through the glass, he put his hand on the glass and went, horror. <laughs> It was, yeah. it was great because you know he did the apocalypse yeah. now, and it wasn't even his line; it was Brandon. So yeah, that's cool. There's nothing I can share. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just too X-rated, man. <laughs> Can't do it. Oh, here's one. Check with the cup. The cup has the drugs. <laughs> day a while ago, everything just kept going wrong with the microphone and then the stand. And, and, and so the microphone that I was using, just all, out of the blue, I'd start saying my line and then it would just flip up. And then they'd come in and they'd fix it and then start again. And then on its own, it would just flip up again. And then he'd come in and then fix it. And then after he fixed that, then the stand that someone else was using just like fell down. And then fixed that and then my microphone flipped up again. <laughs> Weird. Weird. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, as goofy, there are, are a lot of outtakes that are buried deep in the Disney vault somewhere, and uh, I can't relate them or I wouldn't have a job when I get back to <laughs> a Disney character. But, uh, no, we, we've been warned several times, like the Dr. Daisy thing, some things are just, you know, very close to the edge, and our minds just go there. I had to <laughs> sing a song once, and they said, really articulate this well, because the lyrics were, shake, shake, shake your peanuts. <laughs> you better articulate that really well. Wow. <laughs> shake your peanuts. Shake your peanuts. They asked you to do it faster? That's in the show, yeah. You can shake your own damn peanuts. <laughs> <clears throat> That's a, that was a tough session, you know. Yeah. You don't want to slur on anything with that. You know. <laughs> oh, there's a bunch of Hi. Okay, so this is for Pinky. Yes. You were on this show for so long with this wonderful award-winning music. I have to know, did you ever try your hand at any of Yakko's songs? Well, I did. I did try to sing United States, Canada, Mexico, Panama. Hey, could you make it? <laughs> <laughs> It's a great big universe, every moment you can be with his tiny little specks about the size of Mickey Rooney. By the way, thank you. If any of you are interested, um, in a couple hours, Randy Rogel, who wrote all of that fabulous Animaniacs music, uh, and I are going to be doing uh, an, an evening of Animaniacs music at the Hilton. Uh, at 7 o'clock, so if you guys want to come out, and if, uh, it's, uh, I'm a good singer and everything, and I'm a good actor. Randy is, we, the word gets bona fide, the word gets bandied around a lot, but Randy truly is a genius. And you wrote all of the stuff that you guys like, so we're going to be doing about um, 15 or 17 of those songs at 7 o'clock tonight. So if you're interested, come on over. But thank you very much for asking. It's about the best I can do at the moment, because I'm just about ready to, it's, isn't it 5 o'clock somewhere? <laughs> Thank you. Hi, um, this is for Muscle Man. Can you tell me about um, how you and Starla first met? Well, <laughs> I saw her at the supermarket. I was like, whoa. <laughs> this is the hottest chick I've ever seen. And she sort of looks like me. <laughs> I'm gonna go talk to her. And so I did, and I kinda wasn't on my game at first, but I eventually got things together. And we went out, and it was pretty great. Hi. Hello. Hello, microphone. This question is for Mark Chain. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> What do you do when you're trying to serenade people when Vicky won't call you back? What, what do I do when I'm trying to what? <laughs> what do you do when you're trying to serenade the ladies when Vicky won't call you back? Oh, uh, well, I sing them a song because the fact is that serenade suggests that that in fact is the case. Right? <laughs> See, I'm from Europe. I'm not stupid. <laughs> 
So, like, if I were serenading you, I would say, um, You are the promised kiss of springtime that makes the lonely winter seem long. Well, that would, like, totally freak you out, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, that means you're healthy. <laughs> Hi again. <laughs> All right, Muscle Man. And forgive me for this, because I got there 50 bucks by friend of this. Hello, Muscle Man. I am Muscle Fan. Out of all the fat guys up here, who would you like to get into a fight with? And who do you think you could actually win against? <laughs> I think I could win against all of them. <laughs> <laughs> but if I had to go against one, I would pick Goofy, because... He'll fall down the easiest, most of the This is a question for Donatello. Uh, how did I know that? <laughs> so, hey, April, can I just tell you something? The real April who lives in the sewer is not even in your league. <laughs> so, uh, if you wouldn't mind coming living in the sewer, then I'll tell the other one to hit the road. <laughs> well, that actually depends on your answer to my question. I want to know if your rivalry with Casey is finally over. Over? Oh, oh honey, I could beat him like a rented mule. <laughs> I told him the other day, I said, Casey, if you keep trying to hit on April, I'm going to cut you three ways, up, down, and continuously. <laughs> Here's my hotel room key. Use <laughs> it. <laughs> and bring, bring Barbie with you. Um, you are going to hear Narf. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Hi there. So, um, question for all of you of if you could only tell one story of your favorite time or most fun time working with another actor, what would it be? So the question was, uh, your favorite time just working with another actor? Yes. And not necessarily in voiceover, just uh, just working with another actor, yes? Yes. Hmm, I, I have, it's not, I'm not trying to be coy, I have an embarrassment of riches. I've been doing this a long time, and I have had the good fortune of working, I've had, met some new friends this weekend, folks whose work I've admired, and finally had the chance to meet them, and then had friends like Billy, who have been a part of my life for a generation. Um, I, uh, I have to tell you a really a, a quick story, actually, about Mr. Spielberg, the, um, when he produced it, you probably know Animaniacs and Pinky in the Brain and Tiny Toons and, you know, Hysteria, all those things I had the good fortune of working on. And I remember at the, uh, this was actually a very good story, at the um, launch party on the Warner Brothers lot, right underneath the water tower, um, they had a big party uh, for the launch of Animaniacs. And I remember that at the time, the studio was being run by two guys named Bob Daly and Terry Simmel. And uh, they came down along with Stephen to go around and meet everybody and say thank you and all that stuff. And I will never forget this. I I've worked with Stephen on a couple of other shows, and, and um, there's a reason that people like that are special people. They're clearly gifted and talented, but he's a very, very fine human. And by that, I mean that <clears throat> I saw him walking, and I was there with my son, who was probably eight, eight or nine at the time, and Mr. Spielberg came over. And I'm sure there was somebody who said, okay, this guy, he's the guy that does Yakko, he does Pinky and all that. It doesn't matter. However he got the information, was right, hey, Rob, thank you very much, great work, blah, 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 blah. I said, like, thank you very much, Mr. Spielberg, all this stuff. And before I could get it out of my mouth, he said to my, to, about my son, he said, is this your boy? I said, it is. He goes, do you think we can get a picture together? Now, how cool is that, right, that, that he takes the onus off me because he knows everybody there wants a picture with the legendary Steven Spielberg. But he makes it easy. And I will never forget that. I've probably told that 40 times. And I will never forget that story because it's a lesson for everybody. You can always pay it forward, irrespective of where you are in the social s spectrum or financial spectrum. There's a moment in which you can have a purely human interaction and do something that makes somebody else's life happy. And he didn't have to do that. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, 
as I mentioned, you know, I've, I've got to work with a lot of great people because of the mass effect games. I mentioned Martin Sheen, uh, of course, earlier, and uh, you know Keith David is, is in those games oh, as well. So I mean, just amazing, amazing folks. <laughs> But uh, one of the one of the favorite uh, you know people that I got to work with uh, was actually in a live stage show. Uh, I don't know if you guys are aware of a show called SCTV, oh, uh, yeah. which is it's very big in Canada and of course it was here in the states. And uh, uh, Joe Flaherty, uh, who played uh, on that show, Cal Floyd, Matt Caballero, Floyd Robertson, and various other characters. Uh, he came up uh, to our theater in Edmonton. We just got like a little 175 seat improv theater. Uh, and we do a live improvised soap opera uh, every week and with a continuing storyline and the people who've been doing it. We've been, you know, we've got people who've been in, the, in that show for 25 years and it's just like great. a great, a great family of improv people and we change up the sort of setting and genre uh, every season. Joe uh, first showed up and he came, he played when we were doing a western and he basically, his character was uh, Robert Mitchum from Night of the Hunter. Ah. Uh, and yeah, I mean, with uh, love and hate tattooed on his, uh, on his fists. And uh, yeah, he was, he was an amazing guy. And it was really cool just to get to meet somebody who had been such an influence on me. I, I grew up watching SCTV. It was the reason that I enjoyed sketch comedy. It's what got me into improv. And uh, he was just such a great guy, really gracious. And subsequently, you know, he became really good friends with our theater company, and we've we've done gone down to LA and done stuff with him. And he's come up to Edmonton, so yeah, the Joe Flaherty. That's who I think. Well, not to uh, get all corny or anything like that, but I grew up listening to this guy. Man. Yeah. I grew up because I'm old. Right oh. <laughs> I'm small potatoes compared to these guys. I'm Frylock. I've been doing it for 15 years, <laughs> and these guys are legends, man. Oh, legends. <laughs> incidents stick out in my mind as just there's like wow things. Uh, one was when my son was born and I was talking to Roy Disney who was the most down-to-earth guy you'd ever meet for someone that's a billionaire and all of this. I went into his office once and he had bought a castle in Ireland. And I said, I don't know what that looks like. And he said, well here, you know, and he handed me a VHS tape which is home movie of him walking around his castle, well, the turret's leaking, and here's our car, and twelve hundreds, and he just gave, just bring this back at the end of the week, and you're, oh, oh yeah, so I got to watch Roy Disney's home movies. I showed him a picture of my son, he says, hmm, that yeah, looks like something we would animate. Yeah, he said, that was cool, but the biggest one was in Florida, I got to go to a, uh, a dinner, it was the induction into the TV Hall of Fame, and there was a party before, and you got to see all the celebrities and stuff, and within five minutes, I had gotten to meet and talk with Walter Cronkite and Muhammad Ali. And Muhammad Ali asked me, and he was just starting to get kind of the Parkinson's, he was talking kind of slow, and I you know, says, oh, I do the voice of Goofy, and he said, do you know I've talked to the kids in the hospitals? And I do, I, from time to time, we talk to kids, uh, make a wish foundation, stuff like that. And I said, yeah, you know, and it really brightens the kids up. And he said, well, in your mind, you wrote, man. You know, and I, oh. <laughs> Five minutes left, so we're gonna see how many of these questions we can get through. We can't guarantee all of them, so really sorry if you don't get your chance to ask a question. Uh, also, when we um, at the end of the panel, I know you're, it's really urgent, but please resist the urge to come up and, and talk and take pictures because we're going to clear the room afterwards. Sorry about that. I just want to make that announcement, so let's try to get through these questions. Uh, this is a question for Mark. Uh, could we have your take on a female Borgia? 
Take on a female Borgia. Oh, it's just, okay, all right, well, let's see. <laughs> I do not have male genitals. <laughs> that, that would just be what she said. Hello. Okay. Hi. Commander Shepard. Sir. I have a new mission for you. I have a lyric that I want you to sing for me. Sir, what? I have a new lyric that I want you to sing for me. A new lyric. Very well, yes. It goes like this. You can fight like a Kogan, run like a leopard, but you'll never be better than Commander Shepard. <laughs> you can fight like a Krogan, run like a leopard, but you'll never be better than Commander Shepard. <laughs> D23 in Anaheim, we did a 20 year reunion of a goofy movie. And Tevin Campbell, who yeah. voiced Powerline, out showed up and sang Eye to Eye live without a rehearsal in front of about 1,200 fans. Got a three and a half minute standing ovation. That's how popular that character is. Yeah. 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 and a silly voice. Yeah, to make it, to make it, um, not even <laughs> All right. Let's see. Um, uh, my best insult as, okay. Uh, hey, really nice dress. What'd you do with the rest of the tablecloth? <laughs> oh my God. Your face looks like your neck grew up. <laughs> According to my fried door, I'm going to vomit if I look at you anymore. <laughs> now, when I'm around you, it makes me want to cry. <laughs> when you were born, they turned you over and said, look, twins. <laughs> Shot out of a catapult. Oh, the uh, goofy yell, which I always have to do twice, once for the engineers. I say, now this is loud, and it's all game ready. Then I do it, and full blast, it's like, Do you all ever do things like that for silent auctions or, you know, donate your voice like you'll leave a, you know, somebody can bid on and, and if so, what have you all done in that sense to, for charity and for other awarenesses that you're interested in? Uh, I, I love using uh, whatever gifts I've been fortunate enough to cultivate for charity um, and particularly because most of us do stuff that is essentially children's stuff or children's stuff. And, uh, and the kids and parents enjoy it as much. I, I mean, I don't know how many, really, same thing. I don't know how many times I've called kids in hospitals, and not just me. I mean, you know, we're all kind of altruistic. Um, it's a perfect vehicle to use to make someone smile. But I've gone to tons of hospitals in person, and I'm telling you something, I don't dress up like a turtle. I just don't. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. 
because once the kids hear the voice, and, and now that I've been doing it a long time, the parents as well. Um, and I, um, I, I do a lot of work. By the way, many of y'all are, are military, and you have my undying respect. I am all about being... I've had the good fortune of working with the USO a number of times, and uh, very briefly, I don't care if I'm at Fort Myer or Bethesda Naval Hospital or wherever, these kids are pretty much in our wheelhouse. They're like 18 to 30. And I can't tell you how many kids, I mean bad-ass Marines, fall apart when you say, no. <laughs> and it's the, it, it is profoundly gratifying to see that there is something about our talent that has been able to touch these people who, will, who are volunteering to be in the military, you know? So yeah, I mean, any time, we all do it, yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I've done that, uh, certainly voicemail uh, recordings and things like that, sometimes just little videos, uh, some charities that have, uh, Child's Play actually is a charity uh, that I've done uh, so it's essentially getting toys, video games for uh, kids who are in, in hospitals and kids and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, they, basically when, when charities call us up, and sometimes we've done things through Bioware, one thing that Bioware has done often is a tour of Bioware in, uh, in my company, and I just sort of like guide people around the offices and everything and things like that. And again, uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation, stuff yeah. like that. I sign stuff all the time for charitable organizations. I'm doing it this year, Dragon Con this year, so I do things that I make sure. <laughs> Here and then uh, we've had Make a Wish uh, people come into Cartoon Network before and just signing. We sign posters and people sell the money they made for charities. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you sign things. You donate things. You give your time talking to kids in hospitals. And you you, you can't under or overestimate the power that these characters have with kids. Uh, Wayne Allwine, Mickey Mouse, was talking to a girl who was had uh, leukemia. And her mom had said, she's resisting treatment, your attitude, she's kind of given up. Wayne gets on and says, gosh, you know, in Pluto, he uh, takes his medicine, he feels a lot better. Just from that one sentence, a few months later, we got a letter from the mother who said that because of that, the child's attitude changed and went into remission because she was starting to take her, her chemotherapy willingly. That kind of group is an idea of how important it can be to that people. That puts it in perspective. So we don't take these voices on these characters lightly. They're they're uh, they're real. They are real entities. You gotta uh, respect that. So thank you. Thank you. Guys, <laughs> right, let's give it a round.